Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's looking at a Range Rover Sport. Okay, so this vehicle's got a persistent fault with exhaust filter there coming up. Engine light comes on and off periodically as he's driving. And this message, self cleaning required, drive for 20 minutes. What happens after 20 minutes is the red triangle then will come on, uh, or the DPF symbol there will turn to red. But then you turn it off, start it back up, and it will be back on yellow again. So the main point of this video I'm going to focus on is this code here, vehicle conditions incorrect for particle filter regeneration. Now most cars, you know, they're, they're not really, I'd like to say, set up properly uh, or they don't give you the correct message. What this is saying on here is to drive the car and it will clean itself. But that's not happening because we have that fault that we just showed there. See while this fault is logged in the system it's not going to regenerate even though the car is saying it will regenerate if you take it on a drive it won't because we have this fault here logged and the reason for that code being here that the vehicle conditions are incorrect is because of this code turbocharger overboost condition and it's a very common issue I've showed it loads of times on my videos but mainly like I said I want to concentrate on if you got these sort of codes what a lot of people are doing is just doing a force regeneration sending the customer underway and then you'll find that the fall comes back again and they don't know why but basically when you've got this code you're probably going to have another DPF blocked code somewhere and then you'll have another code it could be a turbo overboost it could be an underboost code it could be a glow plug fault uh, airflow meter fault temperature sensor faults anything of the sort basically so what it means is you need to fix these faults and then concentrate on your DPF code so once you fix these codes this is why the DPF is is broken basically or blocked I said I've said it loads of times before that the DPF is not the problem and people say well that don't make sense the DPF is blocked of course it's the problem but the DPF is the cause of an underlying fault elsewhere and I still seem to struggle to get that message across to people so if we exit out of those fault codes and we come to the data stream I'm gonna search for a few items on here and we'll have a look at them okay so here we have diesel particle filter soot load inferred 89% 30 grams of soot and differential pressure at 2 so that could be sort of 29 20, 20 millibars to 29 millibars of pressure these only jump up in 10 increments okay turn the engine off so the question here is what I think a lot of garages or something get confused with is okay let's um let's do a force regen reset the codes now should we clean the DPF no the DPF probably is going to need cleaning but not right now what we need to do is find the fault and fix that then we can concentrate on the DPF so the turbo overboost fault on these is probably one of the simplest vehicles to fix for that code because that code can be difficult to track down on some cars but of course these I'm very familiar with this engine so I know where the problem is going to lie within the throttle body right here so we'll undo a couple of these clips remove this clip here pull away this section of the holes there and if we have a look at this let's get the light on there I knew that was going to happen so if we look closely at the plate you see it's shifted off center so there's a gap over this side and there's no gap over here so it's getting stuck basically and that shouldn't happen this is what controls the boost and this is what picks up the boost this is the boost sensor here map sensor so it's a very simple part to remove we just open this clip and then we've got a 10 millimeter bolt here a plug here and that is basically just about it open this up 
got a 10 mil bolt right there okay so we'll get that open now we just need to open out this clip here pull that apart remove the plug from the boost sensor so I'll squeeze the little tab and then pull it out another one on here might need a little clip to get down there behind that let's pull it out okay now we've got that and this one disconnected we should be able to just give this a wiggle so it's catching there sometimes they do catch onto that so you got another little bolt here that you can remove just to let that have some flex so just open that up just give it a wiggle there so it's loose twist it to the side so it's going in into this side let's just tuck those over there again so they're not in our way as we tuck that to the side now, twist it around and pull it outwards. That's all of the carbon soot that your EGR valve is chucking back in. What I would say is, on these vehicles, if this EGR valve was this return pipe here was deleted there is a blanking plate available for these I think if you did blank that off uh, of course if you do blank it off you'd have to have a, a remap done but if that was blanked off I don't think these problems would uh, keep occurring these throttle bodies here see it's a very simple job to do but these are about 500 pound each time and they are very common i mean this is probably going to need replacing in another 20 to 40 thousand miles again because of the heat i think that comes from this egr valve not only the heat but also all of this that sticks everywhere uh, look over this side look at that So we'll uh, so clean clean out where the new part's gonna sit. Get all of the soot away from here. Yeah. I thought your video is very clever. So I've got here a new replacement part. So to fit this back in, I'm gonna put it in this sort of direction, so upside down, twist it to the right. Get that side in, sit it down, oh, I'm not sure if I included that as well, I did grease up the rings on each each side here, just so it slides in nicely. And it was a bit like at the moment in that it flashes on and off, before it flashes on and off. Yeah, so customers saying it's been to Land Rover and they said they couldn't find the problem. Um, I find that uh, amazing to be honest because it's it, this is a TSB it's it's logged as a regular problem uh, so customers here with me he's just that's what he's just saying to me he said he's, he's had it at Land Rover they said they couldn't find an issue uh, then he's had it at DPF cleaners which have been cleaning his DPF and sending him on his way and then the next day the light comes back on so surprising really just such a simple fault like this just I keep seeing the same repeat story coming back to me Okay, back in the vehicle, what I'm going to do is raise up the suspension just so it makes it a little bit easier on me to get underneath Okay, I'm underneath the vehicle now over here we have the DPF pressure hoses I'm going to use a trim tool just to pull that off
sort that out of the way I can connect up my own piece of rubber hull here which is a piece of fuel line okay now I've got that connected under there what I'm using is this gun from launch UK and the fluid that goes with it which is this launch UK DPF cleaner that's connected to a compressor set at 130 psi now I can squeeze the trigger get the fluid in there and what this does is it just saves me having to do a regeneration or driving the vehicle for up to an hour up and down the road to hopefully get the soot mass back down but if we do it with this this is going to flush any of the soot out that is in there okay so the fluid's in we are now back inside the vehicle what i'm just going to do for now is just clear those so we've still got the vehicle conditions incorrect um what we're going to do is go to special functions common special function so we're going to calibrate the throttle valve that we've fitted on and off with the ignition and back off again now I'm going to go to exhaust emission diesel particle filter replacement I'm going to tell her this had one of those if your DPF's overloaded as that message would say there it is very dangerous to do this so make sure your DPF is not overloaded before you do this let's turn the ignition on first so that's not going to work retry now we can clear the code again and then read it now that's gone see that code will not clear until you tell her this had a new dpf so we're going to sorry we need to go back there we'll have a look at the live data now back here again we'll start the vehicle up hold the revs up around 3000 rpm so we can see 16 is 160 millibars of pressure see that's increasing for now but that will start decreasing soon once the fluid is pushed out this pressure we want to see that pressure there around about five I'd say at these revs and we should see a zero at idle so these numbers here these have been reset to zero when we tell it it's had a new DPF okay we are now down to sort of three or four millibars we can see now these numbers are dropping Get a lot of ex exhaust steam as you can see it may look like smoke but it is like a steam vapor from the fluid so this is a 2017 with 63,000 mile on it I'm gonna take it for a test drive now okay back from a short trip we have all of these down to almost zero now what doing this the way I've done it is with the fluid getting this pressure down this pressure is going to be cleaned down at less than 100 degrees and if you do this without the fluid as a forced region or a passive region you're going to get degrees of around about 620 degrees but of course if the DPF is blocked that can reach a thousand degrees and then damage your DPF okay so if we come out of the data stream and we go to the fault codes you can see the faults I haven't returned which is great so that's it, Land Rover is all finished, that's another throttle body bites the dust and I'll see you on the next video.